Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 328 on Now You Know. We are brought to you by our amazing Patreon patrons. Help support us bring you independent news every week by heading over to patreon.com slash now you know. There are really cool perks over there. It makes a great holiday gift and you can get it late. You can get, you can just tell someone you're going to pay for it and uh, it's all taken care of. You can get a cool mug. You can get a cool mug. We'd like to thank Climate Exchange for sponsoring this video. Right now, the Climate Exchange 7th Annual Raffle is in full swing. They have even added to the prize package this year. That's right. The grand prize winner can choose now a Tesla of your choice or a Rivian R1S SUV with any and all options. Climate Exchange will take care of the taxes for a total prize value of up to over $250,000. Now, if you don't win the grand prize, you can still win $10,000 cash for second place, $5,000 for third place, $3,000 for fourth, and $2,000 for fifth place. Support the mission of Climate Exchange to pass smart, ambitious climate policy in states around the country through this annual raffle. And this time of year, you could give the chance to win. Buy a raffle ticket for that hard-to-buy four person on your shopping list, and they could end up winning big. Once again, the grand prize winner can choose from a fully loaded Tesla of your choice, a Model X Plaid, a Model S, a Model 3, or a Model Y, or you could choose the Rivian R1S SUV. Tickets are just $250. And they're only selling 5,000 tickets. The live drawing is set for February 24th. Thank you to Climate Exchange for sponsoring this video. So let's start with some tweets of the week. Uh, here's a biggie. On Sunday, Elon tweeted, going forward, there will be a vote for major policy changes. My apologies, won't happen again. And then Elon tweeted out a poll. He said, should I step down as head of Twitter? I will abide by the results of this poll. And 17.5 million people voted. 57% said yes. And Elon says, as the saying goes, be careful what you wish as you might get it. So he he is stepping down or he might step down? I think he's going to step down. I okay. think he follows what people, I mean, he said it many, many times on Twitter. He's going to follow what people want. And look, we're going to be talking about more of this on the Investor Club bonus stories because this has a lot of implications for Tesla stock. Some more big news. Mm -hmm. According to Mexican news organization Millennio, Tesla will be announcing, after the new year, its newest Gigafactory location. And it will be in Santa Catarina, in the state of Nuevo Leon, Mexico. Called it. We called it. Yeah, remember Elon visited Nuevo Leon back in October. Yeah. Wait, so why are all those photos tinted yellow? Well, because they were taken in Mexico. You know, any footage that's filmed in Mexico, you need to add that tint. Otherwise, people might think that it was just filmed in, like, California. <laughs> right? That's the rules. Those, those are the rules, right? <laughs> okay. Well, Millennio seems to have gotten hold of a confidentiality agreement between the government and Tesla that says Tesla will come to Santa Catarina. The investment will be finalized in the coming weeks after the end of the year it will be announced. The commitment is that it must be completed immediately after the start of 2023. We know that it will generate employment and that it will be located in the only area available, which is the west of that municipality. It is not possible to inform more because there is a confidentiality contract. Isn't part of a confidentiality agreement that you don't tell anyone about it? <laughs> well, <laughs> so this would put Giga Mexico just to the west of Monterey. And I think I'm going to play pin the Giga Factory on the Mexican state here. And I think here. Hope all my years of GeoGuessr don't fail me. Wait, so you think it's going to end up being right there? That's my best guess. Uh, and it's not a bad location. It's 40 minutes from downtown Monterey, which has a metro area population of 3.8 million people. And I mean, population is important. You need enough people to work for you that live nearby. Right. 3.8 million in the metro area puts it in line with the top 15 U.S. cities. Uh, San Francisco, Oakland, Fremont has 4.4 million. Detroit has 4.3 million. Seattle, Tacoma has 3.5 million. Now, where does that put us in terms of Giga Austin and Giga Nevada? Austin only has 1.8 million in the metro area and Reno Sparks has less than half a million. Oh, so that explains why Tesla has pretty much stopped expanding Giga Nevada. There's just not enough people there. Exactly. Now, to our Mexican viewers who live nearby, you are our eyes and ears, and perhaps drone pilots, to cover what's going on in the area. 
Yeah, I mean, we as a community have been so fortunate to have like Joe Tegmeyer, Jeff Roberts, the rest of the quad squad down in Austin, not to mention all the great drone pilots over Giga Shanghai, Giga Berlin. So now might be the perfect time to start your own YouTube channel and spin up those blades. And we'd love to cover you here on the news. So if you've been thinking about maybe being a drone pilot, um, you're going to have lots of time to perfect your craft. And hey, if you want to give us a little cred for having called it, hit the like button. And that leads us to... Elon retweeted the holiday update rolling out now. And it's rolling out much earlier than usual. It's usually yeah. like <laughs> Christmas Day. And you're like, everyone's like, hey, would you um, make the food? And you're like, I'm, I have to I have to update my car. Hang on. So the first feature is one that we talked about last week. Yeah, uh, it says view the cabin camera from the Tesla app while using dog mode or sentry mode to keep an eye on your puppy. And the footage on the app is also labeled with the temperature of the cabin interior. So now you can make sure your pooch is comfy while you're running an errand. I think that's a really good addition. And remember, with that update that came out in October, now you can have sentry mode and dog mode on at the same time. And let's talk about another big part of the holiday release. Tesla announced Tuesday that Teslas are now steam powered. What? Some kind of electrically heated water pump that drives the main axle? What? No, 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 no. I mean, the gaming platform Steam has now come to Tesla. So Elon tweeted, you can play Cyberpunk, Elden Ring, and thousands of other games in your car with an epic sound system. He said it even works with a keyboard and mouse. All right, cool. Let's go uh, to your Model 3 and let's start playing some games. No. What? What's the matter? Hang on. I, I'm just, let's go play some games. I'm just reading the release the notes. It, it says that Steam is currently only available for Model S and X cars. Okay, let's go play some games on Sparky. Only cars with 16 gigabytes of RAM. All right, so that's only Model S's and X's that came out starting in late January of 2022. Uh, that's when they upgraded from eight gigabytes of RAM to 16 gigabytes. Yeah. And Black Model 3 tweeted out, but doesn't work on most 2021, 2022 Model S's, X's, only super new ones. Will a retrofit be available? And Elon said, yes. All right, wait, so I have a question. If Steam requires the AMD Ryzen chip with 16 gigabytes of RAM, then why won't this run on the Model 3 or Y? I mean, many of them have that chip. Well, because they don't have a discrete GPU like the Model S or X. Basically, the Model S and X have their own dedicated computer for gaming. I also want to note that Tesla added Bluetooth controller support. But again, this is only for the Model S and X. Look, this is a bummer for Model 3 and Y owners, and hopefully a light version of Steam will come out for those models. But I mean, this is the differentiator that Tesla wanted, I think. Um, the Model S and X are the flagship cars. And to be luxury, super desirable cars, they have to have super desirable features like this kind of gaming. And don't forget that you'll need at least 256 gigabytes of storage. And we're going to talk more about that on one of our many Patreon bonus stories this week. By the way, that's how you get most out of this show. Join us on Patreon for the polls, the weekly bonus stories, and so much more. Join for as little as a buck a month. So that last holiday update present from Tesla was kind of like when you get that present as a kid from your grandparents and you rip open the wrapping paper and it's this awesome present and then it requires batteries and they're not in the package and so you can't play with it and you just stare at it all day. <laughs> or you just pretend that it works. Except that's if you have a new Model S or X and you just need to buy a bigger SSD card and that'll take a few days to arrive. But if you have a Model 3 or Y, or an older Model S and X. Nothing for you. And yeah, I checked. It doesn't run on Sparky, even though I just bought the upgraded MCU. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is worse because those cars may never play Steam games. Okay, but wait, there are more presents. Yeah, there is now Apple Music, so the ability to stream 100 million songs and 30,000 playlists ad-free. We talked about media control last week. MyQ connected garage door openers are now supported. We talked about climate control, fan speed, and emissions testing mode via the mobile app, or basically the remote fart mode last week. Zoom meetings can now be held in the car on the main screen. Yep, we knew that was coming and have reported on that a few weeks ago. But it's only on certain models. All new Model S's and X's and only Y's and 3's built since January of 2022, and you have to have premium connectivity to make that work. And if you were really disappointed that you couldn't get Steam to work on your car, don't worry. You now have Mahjong that has been added to the games list. Always Rainbows, which is the option to have the screen display Rainbow Roads when in autopilot, is now here like we reported it would last week. And Scheduled Light Show is now in the toy box. What's that? That allows you to schedule your Tesla's light show up to 10 minutes in advance or to watch a multi-car orchestra by setting them up to start simultaneously. And you can now celebrate New Year's with the old Lang Syne light show. They have a new song. And that should work with the, you know, custom. Yeah, you can also do the custom ones, but this one's like kind of built in if you don't want to 
do any programming. of. <laughs> There's also auto turn signals and the contact lookup that we discussed last week. And you can now use Bluetooth gaming controllers. Uh, works well with the PS5 controllers, I'm hearing. And again, that's just a new Model S and X feature. Yeah. And now there is track mode for Model Y performance models. That's cool. For Model S, there's auto present door handles, which allows you to disable the auto present door handles while parked at home. And for the Model X, there's the ability to now disable automatic doors when parked at home. The rear screen control in the refresh Model S's and X's allows you to select between front and rear displays as the preferred audio source or completely lock the rear screen. And confirm phone call transfer that we talked about last week. So, I mean, I was actually hoping for more games, not just Steam games, but I mean, Mahjong didn't really cut it for me. I played it and it was fine if you like that game, but like, that's it. I wanted more Christmas presents. Um, You know, I think you're getting a little spoiled, Zach. I think I am. Um, It, you know... It's going to it's going to be what Christmas always is, which is that the rich kids are going to get, you know, their special presents, you know, and they get the latest, greatest toys. And, uh, you know, we're going to get some, you know, Mahjong. I don't think that this is a bad. So this is like the year that I got fencing swords. That sounds awesome. It does sound awesome in retrospect. But as a kid, when you're hoping for like a computer and you get fencing swords, it's just kind of a letdown. You never got me fencing swords. I did not because it was a letdown. (laughs) Wouldn't have been a letdown for me. That sounds awesome. And it looks like Rivian gave us an early Christmas present, too. What do we get? Oh, Camp Kitchen? No. Um, uh, the gear shuttle, at least. So that way we can uh, the slide the, the drawer out of the gear tunnel. We ordered that a year ago. We're still waiting for it, by the way. No. Uh, but we did get more range. How would you like that? Like a like a range? Like to cook on? No, no. Uh, more battery range. Oh, okay. How, how much are we talking? Well, for us R1T owners with the large pack, we went from 314 miles to 328 miles. Hmm. R1S owners went from 316 to 321 miles. Okay, so we got 4.4% more range. I mean, that's not bad. And I wonder how they did it. I mean, do you think that they unlocked just more battery pack? Yeah, I'm not sure if it was that or if they figured out a way to make things a bit more efficient, like using one of the motors more than another or mm-hmm. something. Um, and why did the SUV version, the R1S, only get 1.5% more range? Yeah, comment down below if you think you know how Rivian did it. Um, And we should test this, but the problem is we have off-road tires. Uh, To get the ranges that they're talking about here, you need more efficient all-season tires. Right. And another Christmas present uh, from Rivian is the R1T just finished crash testing, and it received the highest safety rating, the Top Safety Pick Plus, from the IIHS, or the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. So the only other pickup truck to currently receive Top Safety Pick Plus is the Toyota Tundra. Um, so if you were looking for a safe pickup truck, you, everyone always told me as a kid, Mm -hmm. oh, you want, you want to buy a truck because that's going to be safer, Mm. either a truck or an SUV because they're bigger. When you get into an accident, you'll kill the other person. No problem, but you'll be okay because you have more momentum. Um, which I guess goes right along with having a giant 135 kilowatt hour battery. Right. (laughs) Um, and that's why. (laughs) Just like with all EVs. <laughs> so Elon retweeted uh, the suite from Tesla, introducing Tesla Electric, the electricity plan that offers low cost, clean energy for homes with power walls starting in Texas. Called it. We called that one, too. <laughs> we called that one a while ago. Yeah. So Tesla said if you're a power wall owner with retail choice in Texas, you can save on your electricity bills. You earn credits towards your bill when you contribute energy stored in your power wall to buffer the grid. As a member, you can also monitor the sources of your electricity supply 24 seven in the Tesla app and ensure that any electricity you use from the grid is offset with 100 percent Texas generated renewable energy. That sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. I mean, I love it when we're right. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about Tesla doing this for years, becoming a utility. So we've seen Tesla launch VPPs or virtual power plants before. There was the 400 homes in Japan in 2021, and there was a VPP in California last year. Now that Tesla got permission from ERCOT in Texas, Tesla is showing that they're super serious about this happening statewide. Yeah, and I think this is just the beginning. Elon has said he wants Tesla Energy to become, quote, a distributed global utility and could outgrow the automotive business. And as Tesla can show how well this works to save ratepayers money and makes the grid more stable for everyone, more and more state utility commissions are going to have to allow Tesla to do this in their states. And this is going to spread, which in turn is going to increase demand for power walls and solar. I love it. If you live in Texas and you're able to sign up for this, please make us a video contributor story about it and let us know how much it saves you on your electric bill. Um, I know that it's not the most exciting video because nothing's moving around. You're just going to be like, here's my power wall and here's my electric bill. But at the end of the day, that's kind of better than like stuff moving all around. Be like, whoa, hey. <laughs> Easier to shoot? Yeah. I don't... <laughs> well, I have 4,000 guinea pigs here and they're all powering my house. I just think it's a uh, power wall in, in a lot of ways is better. Yeah. 
<laughs> than guinea pigs, yes. So back in September, we reported on this seemingly positive news that Rivian had partnered with Mercedes-Benz to build their electric vans in Europe. Well, last week, Rivian said that it will, quote, no longer pursue the agreement. Rivian CEO RJ Scaringe said, We've decided to pause discussions with Mercedes-Benz vans regarding the memorandum of understanding we signed earlier this year for joint production of electric vans in Europe. What? I mean, I know this is only a memorandum of understanding. I mean, it wasn't binding or anything, but usually when companies make those agreements public, it means that they have some pretty serious plans in the works. Look, this is why we don't report on many of these statements from companies. Uh, often they're not worth the paper or the websites they're written on. And this is just another example of how the changing economic environment is affecting companies like Rivian, who are burning through cash at the moment. Yeah, remember, Rivian had a $1.7 billion loss in Q3. And this is probably not the time for them to burn more cash on more factories until their existing capital plans are profitable. Yeah, as RJ said, at this point in time, we believe focusing on our consumer business, as well as our existing commercial businesses, represent the most attractive near-term opportunities to maximize value for Rivian. And, and it's just funny to me, how he thought three months ago that this was a good idea, or was it just to be a distraction for shareholders when he had such a big loss to talk about? I think this is really common with companies. We have something bad to tell you, so we're going to offset it with some fun new agreement we have. Uh, and it was just an MOU. And, and keep that in mind, people. When when companies say we have an MOU, it's just basically, you know, like, hey, you want to try that thing tomorrow? <laughs> hey, that sounds good. And then later on, it's like, hey, uh, sorry, I can't make it. I uh, have something else I have to do. And I knew that when I told you that I was going to come, but I'm not going to tell you that. Like, I, yeah, it's, it's pretty disappointing. And this is why there are so many announcements every week. It's just like, we're going to build a factory. We're going to do all this stuff. And then later on, they can just cancel it. And it's never a big news story. Exactly. In this case, it is because Rivian's not doing so hot. So right. all the news agencies go like, is this a leading story? Yes, it is. And I mean, I guess we're covering it too. Yeah. What are you looking for a raise? Get out. And in SpaceX news, Starship just completed another static fire test last Thursday at Starbase in Texas. So this was prototype Starship number 24. It fired one of its six Raptor engines for about seven seconds. And if you're wondering why it didn't lift off, well, that's what a static fire test is for. You clamp the ship to the ground so it can't take off. You fire up a rocket and test it to make sure that the output is what you thought it would be. Now, the plan is to mate the Booster 7 and the Starship 24 together after all the static fire tests are done for an upcoming orbital flight that could take place in the next few months. Both NASA and Starlink will be two of the first Starship customers. Obviously, with Starlink wanting to launch massive amounts of internet satellites and NASA wanting to launch an Artemis mission to put people back on the moon. I mean, Q3 next year. Next year? That can't possibly hold to that schedule. You never know. Thank you again to one of our favorite drone pilots, YouTuber Joe Tegmeyer, who just spotted this. Some two by fours and some things covered in plastic. I mean, what are we looking at here? No, no, no. Look carefully on the right and you will see the word IDRA, as in IDRA 9000 ton gigapress from Italy. Oh, wow. I mean, the gigapress has finally arrived in Giga Texas. Uh, now, is this outside? No, this is actually looking into the Gigafactory through a window. So he flew the drone <laughs> to the window and is peering inside. As of Friday, the Gigapress area looked like it was preparing for Gigapress installation. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's up and running maybe in the next month or two, because this is right next to the Megapresses. Or I, are we calling them Megapresses? Are they still Gigapresses? They're still Gigapresses. Yeah, those are the 4,000 and 6,000 ton ones. This is going to be the 9,000 ton one, probably for Cybertruck. Super exciting. And we've been seeing a lot of job postings for Cybertruck related jobs in Austin. So I'm super excited about Cybertruck coming mid next year. Yeah. And speaking of Cybertruck, we've reported on Cyberlander, which is a futuristic camper for the Cybertruck. In fact, we interviewed the founder and CEO a couple times, and we're looking forward to checking that camper out when it comes out. Yeah. Now entering the market is another futuristic cyber camper option, the $24,000 starting price camper from Space Campers. And I got to say, it looks really cool with tons of features. So the base version offers seamless installation with no modifications needed to the Cybertruck to load and unload it. You just kind of back it up to your thing and put it on the thing and clamp it to your truck. Full access to the truck bed when open and closed. I think that's really cool, actually, because uh, the other one, the Cyberlander, you kind of gave away your bed and this way you maintain your bed. Uh, there's air powered actuators that break down the camper with the flip of a switch. Keyless entry using the Cybertruck's tailgate locking mechanism um, and compatibility with Cybertruck's battery for accessory add ons. Yeah. Things like water heaters and stuff. Uh, the bed is six foot eight inches long by four foot two inches wide. And you mean the bed that you sleep in? Sorry, yeah, the, the sleeping <laughs> bed. 
There's an additional kitchen accessory, which can be used in a bunch of configurations uh, and a bunch of other cool features. So we're reaching out to space campers to learn more. So stay tuned. And look, I know some of these accessories and features are probably aspirational. I mean, we don't even know the exact dimensions of the Cybertruck. But look, some of these cool accessories could be uh, the solar roof racks, a back rack for mounting the kitchen. Magnetic mounted projector for watching TV and movies inside and outside the truck. And a full camp kitchen. And uh, it might even come sooner than Rivian. <laughs> it might. And also a shower and bathroom. So comment below what you think and what you'd like us to ask the company when we get in touch with them. And we'd like to thank our friends at the Cybertruck Owners Club, which is where I think a lot of people are going to be talking about this. Head on over there because they help sponsor Tesla Time News. They have a website for Cybertruck news, discussions, and community for Cybertruck enthusiasts and future owners like us. There you'll find a crowdsource reservation tracker that you can update and find your place in line. We've been testing our Sondor's Metacycle over on our Now Let's Review channel. Which just surpassed 10,000 subs, by the way. We just released a video showing some real world range tests. Now, this is important because I think this bike has created a new category in e-mobility. They aptly named it the Metacycle because it lives between an e-moped and a motorcycle, in my opinion. Shouldn't it be called a Mopercycle then? Mopercycle. <laughs> Not as sexy. <laughs> they probably thought of that and they were like, uh, no, no, scratch that off the list. Uh, look, it's a new class, so to speak, and I think it will appeal to many people who experience it, but it has to have the right amount of range for what you want to do with it. And we have the data to help you make that decision. So check it out over on Now Let's Review and don't forget to subscribe and leave us a comment over there so we know what you'd like us to review and cover on that channel. So as we've been reporting, Tesla is planning to vertically integrate lithium refining by constructing their own lithium refinery. Tesla has just gotten the unanimous approval from the Robstown Independent School District near Corpus Christi, Texas for the tax abatement for the proposed project. Essentially, the taxable land value would be capped at $20 million for the first 10 years after the refinery opens, giving Tesla a $16.2 million savings on its tax bill. But it doesn't appear to be a done deal yet for Robstown, as Tesla's senior global director, Rohan Patel, said a couple weeks ago during a public hearing that Tesla is still deciding between three potential locations, Louisiana, Robstown, Texas, and north of Toronto in Canada. Yeah, it sounds like the decision should be coming soon. Um, and I think it's really smart of Tesla to get all these districts to compete with one another for incentives. We want you to come here and build, Elon. There's a bunch of incentives. Come over here, eh? You want to build here. It's really nice. <laughs> Tesla is so big now that unlike other companies that probably don't have the resources to try out all these different locations, Tesla is able to basically you know, go to each of these locations and say, like, what can you offer us? According to CNBC, Ford is adding a third shift to its Dearborn truck plant and Rouge Electric Vehicle Center in Michigan to keep up with demand for its F-150 Lightning all-electric pickup truck. So Ford had only planned on producing 40,000 trucks a year when it opened reservations. But now Ford says that with this third 10 hour shift, and that's seven days a week, by the way, they'll be able to get to 150,000 units annual production run rate by the fall of 2023. So now the number of workers has also expanded from 500 to 750 working on the all electric lines. Ford's plant manager, Corey Williams, says, that's how we're doing this fast. We're building a product while building out the factory. And I think this is an important political point. OK, um, as the number of workers around the world shifts from fossil fuel related to clean energy related jobs, the political pressure against sustainable energy from big oil will diminish because politics follows the money and more income is shifting as we speak to clean jobs from dirty ones. And that's kind of nice because um, for some of these workers, they're just going from one car factory to, well, probably the exact same car factory. Um, and they're just gonna go, oh, wow, I didn't put an exhaust system in today. Right. I put in an inverter or something. Right. And uh, isn't that great? And instead of you know a, a big pipe that runs down the length of the vehicle, so that way we don't kill people when they're sitting in the cab, um, I put in a thing that's going to allow people to power their homes or something in the case of an emergency. Exactly. Oh, what a, what a difference that is. And it, it gets people thinking differently, I bet. Yep. But I have a bone to pick with Ford. Oh, yeah? Still can't get over those Panzer engines? Uh, no, this one's a little more recent. Uh, Ford has just raised the price of its Ford F-150 Lightning base model to $56,000. OK, so what? Well, when Ford first announced the F-150 Lightning, the base model was going to cost thirty nine thousand nine hundred seventy four U.S. dollars. Well, you know, this uh, inflation. Forty percent. <laughs> hey, at least they didn't do it all at once. It was forty thousand dollars when released. Then in August, all the lightnings went up 
six to eight thousand dollars. Then October they upped it to fifty two thousand, and now it's fifty six thousand. I mean, what are you going to do? You think the base Cybertruck is going to still come in at thirty nine nine? I mean, I know, but the upper model Lightnings haven't gone up since August. Don't you think that's because there's a bit more margin to play with? I mean, I know, but aside from a few fleet sales here and there, you couldn't even buy one of the base models. Well, maybe for people who reserved it early, comment down below or let us know at hello at now you know channel dot com. We want to know if you've gotten yours yet. And I just think it's important to point out that through November, Ford has sold 13,258 Lightning pickup trucks year to date, which is way less than they promised us. Yeah, because it's harder than it looks to do. But don't worry, we're adding a third shift. One of the wonderful things about a Tesla is the ability to have software bugs fixed with over-the-air updates and the fact that Tesla gives incentives to find bugs. Yeah, case in point, Ryan Levinson of the Kilowatts YouTube channel identified this bug that allowed guests that you shared access to your vehicle with to disable mobile access from the owner. So basically, if you rented out your Tesla on Turo, for instance, mm -hmm. um, and you gave me mobile access uh, using the add driver function, I could disable mobile access for you and then you could no longer access your own car in your mobile app. Yeah, I experienced this on my trip out to Oregon to uh, visit Arcimoto in July. My Turo wouldn't let me use the mobile app, so I couldn't have access to all those nice features like preconditioning and seeing where I parked, etc., because the owner didn't want me to be able to lock him out. But now Levinson has earned himself $300 through the Tesla bug bounty program since this was considered a P3 level security threat. Yeah, P1 threats that are exposed can earn you up to 15 grand. We'll put the link down below for all you white hat hackers. And by the way, Tesla has had an average of $965 payout within the last three months. So if you find a flaw or a security risk, or whatever, they'll pay you, which is so smart. You might be like, well, that's a lot of money. It's nothing. It's peanuts compared to if they have some kind of awful hack. So having white hat hackers find these things and tell them about it early is so, so smart. And you might be saying, well, it's a good thing that there's all these white hat hackers around. <laughs> the difference between a white hat hacker and a black hat hacker is how much you pay them. So as the end of the year approaches, people are starting to get excited. Santa. No, for after Santa returns to the North Pole for his well-deserved slumber. On the night of the 31st, Americans will dream of Model Ys, not sugar plums. Won't they all be out getting hammered? No, the Inflation Reduction Act, remember? Uh, the EV incentive will kick in, and for the first time in three years, you should be able to get a $7,500 tax credit on a Tesla again. So who's going to want to buy a Tesla now? Exactly. Tesla has a bit of a problem here on their hands if they want to show decent numbers for this quarter. So they've been offering some incentives to entice impatient buyers. Right. We covered how Tesla was offering uh, $3,750 off the price to get people to take delivery this year. And now they're tacking on 10,000 miles of free supercharging. Wow. Yeah. Although it can only be used within two years of delivery. Hard to do. Yeah, but it's about a $500 value. True. I mean, more like a $1,200 value if it were gas. But is it enough? Uh, for some people, it might be. Um, some people who really wanted it. and I, But I just, okay, but if you're getting $500 off, but I can wait a few more weeks and get um, $7,500 off, why wouldn't I just wait? Well, it is a tax credit. And if you don't qualify for the credit, this is a good time to pick up a deal. Mm, that's a good point. But it also shows kind of the unwinnable situation that Tesla's in right now and how uh, this is kind of, one of the ways that they're trying to solve this problem. Now, I don't think that this is that big of a problem. No, and right? it's going to go away in two weeks. So I who mean, cares? all you have to do, you could just stockpile the cars right now, which right. I know is like a big no-no in the industry or whatever, but you're going to sell them in January. Well, and this is why quarterly numbers are poop. Yeah, I know. Can we say poop? <laughs> yes. All right, so here's one of those stories that you can share with your uncle who hates EVs and is always hitting you with this false fuddiness crap at family gatherings. You know, I was reading this article that my buddy sent me on the internet, and you know, he emailed it to me, and he said that EVs are gonna break the electrical grid and we're all gonna die and the lights are gonna go out because uh, you drive that Tesla there. I mean, what do you say to that? Well, Uncle Grumps, a study just conducted by Synapse Energy Economics going back 10 years and studying electric usage data from 735,000 EV driving households in California found that actually EV owners helped make the electrical grid cheaper for everyone. According to their research, utilities netted $1.7 billion in profit over 10 years. And because U.S. utilities are not allowed to keep excess profit, they in turn had to lower the electrical rates for everyone, including you, Uncle Grumps. Now, how could EV owners who use more electricity than the average household 
do that? Well, because EV owners tend to charge off peak to save themselves money, which saves utilities money from having to fire up expensive peaker plants. Hmm. And they pass those savings on to all rate payers. So I think it's really cool that we have enough data now to prove Uncle Grump's wrong. So by the way, head on over to our Now You Know Clips channel where we chop this into a little bite-sized clip just for Uncle Grumps that you can share with him this holiday season. That's your little Christmas present for him. All right, it's time for Into the Future, sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving, and maybe Uncle Grumps deserves a shaver if he's been better. <laughs> and you can get 100 free blades if you use the code Now You Know at checkout. Just make sure to put them in your cart before you check out. Step into the future. So finally, Amtrak, America's long distance train system, is announcing that it will finally be going kind of electric. Uh, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act that was signed into law last year is providing $66 billion in rail funding. So Amtrak just revealed this, the Amtrak Arrow. They'll have dual power, both electric motors and diesel engines. What's the difference between this and every diesel locomotive isn't that how diesel locomotives work that's a diesel generator that goes to electric motors yeah so siemens is making 73 arrows in california and they will first roll out uh, for the northeast corridor around 2026 amtrak's current trains are 50 years old so i think all this really is is just um an improvement in technology so now amtrak claims that the arrow will have 90 percent less particulate emissions in diesel operations and these hybrid electric trains will go to full electric in certain tunnels to make them zero emissions for those portions hmm. uh, here is the business seating train here is the coach seating now i, I get it rail only creates two percent of u.s emissions according to the epa uh, but still electric trains is the way to go not not hybrid yeah I, I totally agree. I was really excited when I heard about the story at first because I thought, of course, this will be fully electric trains um, and they're not. Hmm. Um, all the new aero trains will be operational in 2031. So, yeah, I I'm not I don't know. I'm bummed because we know, tr you know, electric trains exist. And I thought this was a perfect use case for them. And I mean, you know, yeah, in terms of emissions, it's not such a big deal. And trains are, by and large, far more efficient than cars. So it, this is not the end of the world or anything like that. Um, but I, I agree. It's like we definitely have the technology. We had the technology well, back in the 40s. Well, and here's the other thing. I mean, if these trains that are replacing are 50 years old, that means we're probably going to be stuck with these trains for 50 <laughs> years, which means that, you know, 2081 is when the story will go out like we're not replacing them with oh, <laughs> those <laughs> fusion ones. We ah, We did it. We're so smart. No, it'll probably be the electric ones. And we're like, why are we putting fusion engines in there? Exactly. All right, it's time for Going Green. And we're sponsored by EcoWare. Now, look, it's uh, getting close to the holidays. Uh, if you haven't gotten your present yet, head on over there. Lots of great stocking stuffers and presents for under the tree. We plant multiple trees ourselves for every order. And we help cap methane spewing abandoned oil wells with the Well Done Foundation, making your purchases carbon negative. I think for a lot of us that don't regularly use ride hailing services like Uber and Lyft, we don't really know what's going on with their efforts to electrify. Yeah, I think we all kind of know that Uber and Lyft have published goals of being electric. For instance, Lyft says it wants to be offering 100 percent electric rides by the end of this decade. But a goal and reality are often very different. So I was intrigued this week to learn about the incentives that Lyft is now offering its drivers to go electric. I think that the actions speak louder than words. So let's see what Lyft is currently doing. So number one, it's now offering a new incentive in California for its drivers to earn an extra $150 a week, up to $8,100 if they give 50 electric rides a week until December 29th, 2024. Number two, up to a 45% discount for charging at EVgo chargers. Number three, drivers can earn between one to 7% cash back on public chargers with the Lyft direct debit card. So. 7% if you're a platinum driver and it goes down to 1% for everyone else. And number four, Lyft has partnered with Wallbox and Coil to offer drivers discounts on sales and installation of level two chargers for their homes. Paul Augustine, Lyft's director of sustainability says, electrifying our transportation network is a crucial step in helping reverse the negative impacts of climate change. We know many drivers on Lyft want to switch to EVs, which is why we're focused on addressing the biggest barriers they face in transitioning upfront costs and access to charging. These offerings are the latest in many steps we're taking to support drivers in switching to an EV on Lyft. So what do you think? If you're a Lyft driver, do you think that Lyft is doing a good job incentivizing its drivers to go electric or could they be doing more? Yeah, comment down below and let us know what you think. But what I think is the number one thing they're doing there, that $150 a week um, for giving 50 electric rides, I think that's a 
pretty big incentive. Um, basically, if you have, say, a Tesla or something and you're thinking like, you know, I'll give like three or four rides a week, this might bump you to go, you know, let me just try and really get a lot of rides in there every week, um, which is going to expose more people to Teslas. And if you're starting to make more money doing it and you start telling your friends and they're like, what? So if I drive an EV, I get an extra 150 bucks a week. Uh, not only are you saving on the gas, mm. like it could just be enough to get people to jump over to an EV. I really do think that you're right, because I think at the end of the day, for a lot of Lyft drivers, it's a monthly game. Yeah. It's it's how much am I spending on the car? How much am I spending on gas and maintenance? And how much am I making per week um, or month? And so $150 a week. I mean, that's enough. So that's 600 bucks a month if you did it every week. That's and enough I to mean, offset. I know it's capped at 8100, but that's enough to maybe make your, your payments. Uh, exactly. And then you're going to be saving money on electric. So it could make a lot of sense. Yeah. All right. It's time for sunspots. So Tokyo's local assembly ruled last Thursday that all new homes built by large scale home builders in Tokyo must have solar panels installed starting in April of 2025. Currently, only 4% of buildings in Tokyo that could have solar panels actually have them installed. So Tokyo is the first Japanese municipality to mandate solar on new homes. So hopefully other cities in Japan will follow suit. And if you're saying, yeah, but Zach and Jesse, that's expensive to require. Well, Tokyo's government estimates that the $7,200 of initial cost for installation of four kilowatts of solar panels will generate profit in six years with government subsidies that the local government is providing. This will also help Tokyo meet their goal of cutting greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by 2030. And if you're saying, Japan, who cares? Small island nation can't possibly make a difference to global warming. Well, Japan is the fifth largest carbon emitter. So yeah, they do make a difference. And Tokyo has 12 million residents. So imagine how much demand for solar panels will increase because of this one ruling. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. And we need your stories, by the way. So remember to keep sending them in two minutes or less. Shoot them in landscape with good audio, no music. Send them to hello at now you know channel.com because we really want to hear what's going on with you. What's going on with Jason? Jason sent us this story about his electric scooter he has been using. Hey, Zach and Jesse. Jason here. Uh, so you guys often talk about e-mobility. You know, you review scooters and you love e-bikes. And I just wanted to share uh, that I've had this electric scooter for about a year and a half. I've done maybe 2,500 miles on it by now and it's cost me maybe $50 on maintenance um, and I just love it and I just wanted to share with you what I have which is a it's a Mini Motors where is it? Mini Motors Dualtron and uh, there she is and I just wanted to share with you how amazing I think scooters are. And I go with it everywhere. It's great. Look at this beautiful day. All right. Now, you know. Well, thank you, Jason. I love hearing about people's use of e-mobility. It really makes it real for me. It like because sometimes I feel like I'm the only one who knows about it. All right. And it's time for our Patreon bonus stories and our Investor Club bonus stories. Oh, and don't forget, we started a new thing over on the Disruptive Investing channel uh, last week. We're going to continue it this week where we're giving out some, you know, news about things that kind of relate to EVs, but also to, you know, your investments. It's a pretty cool show. Um, and if you want to join us on Patreon, by the way, which makes a great Christmas gift, it's only a buck a month and you get all of our Patreon bonus stories. And I think this week we're doing a free story to kind of let you know what that's like. So head on over to Patreon. You'll see a free story there for you. And you can kind of get a sense of like, is this something fun? And you don't even have to sign up or anything. Um, it's a little Christmas gift to you. So you can see what our Patreon bonus stories are like. All right, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories. Uh, it's time for our Patreon shout outs. And if you'd like to get your name in the end credits, all you need to do is head over to patreon.com and sign up. Who do we got this week? We've got Justin Waterman, Ernest Wells Autry, Tim Hawks, Georgie Georgiev, and Sir Eat a Lot. Thank you so much for supporting us. This show doesn't happen without you. And it's time for a Patreon poll. We asked, what are your thoughts about Elon and Twitter? And this was before Elon's poll, literally. I think minutes or hours before his poll, so it's just, you know, the results can be kind of mixed. Um, really interesting spread of results here. Like, what's the number one? So, number one was, I can see why he bought Twitter. I wish he hadn't. Okay. Um, then the second one is, I can see why he bought Twitter. Wouldn't have been my move, but I support it. Mm -hmm. Then it's, I'm really glad that he bought Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then it's, I dislike the effect that it's having on Tesla stock more than anything. And then all the other results are, uh, you know, 10 or below. 
Interesting. So, I mean, uh, the fact that he's probably leaving as the CEO of Twitter, I wonder how that's going to affect people's thoughts. Yeah. And speaking of Twitter and Elon, it's time for Elon's tweets of the week. And Rick N. Tumleson said, Dear Elon, you have one job. Only one thing you do or don't do will be remembered in a thousand years. Did you open the solar system to humanity or not? Period. Twitter, etc. are dangerous distractions and may kill the dream. Please step away from the keyboard. And Elon said, social media in general, especially Twitter, we're eroding civilization. I agree with that one. If civilization collapses before Mars becomes self-sustaining, then nothing else matters. Human consciousness is gone. Elon said, under pressure from hundreds of activist employees, Twitter deplatforms Trump, a sitting U.S. president, even though they themselves acknowledge that he didn't violate the rules. And he's talking about the part five of the Twitter files. Um, Elon posted this meme of him apparently killing bots. Then Elon said, follow the bunny. Follow the white rabbit. Oh, the white rabbit. Right. <laughs> yes. Elon said the ratio of digital to biological compute is growing exponentially. Then Elon retweeted this tweet from Tesla. Semi's cabin is significantly bigger than that of traditional heavy trucks with lots of storage and easy access. Yeah, I remember standing in the uh, cab of the truck and there is a lot of room in there. Elon said at risk of stating the obvious, beware of debt in turbulent macroeconomic conditions, especially when the Fed keeps raising rates. And then Elon shared this meme. Yeah, from Gladiator. What we do in life. Uh, he then said, uh, highly recommended reading, and he's talking about this Mike Solana uh, piece on Pirate Wires, uh, which I checked out. You might want to check out, too. Okay, and then we're talking about doxing here, which if you don't know what that means, means giving away someone's location. He said, any account doxing real-time location info of anyone will be suspended as it is a physical safety violation. This includes posting links to sites with real-time location info. Posting locations someone traveled to on a slightly delayed basis isn't a safety problem, so it is okay. And we're going to talk about more of this on uh, Patreon bonus stories. And this is because, as he said, last night, car carrying little X, his son, in LA, was followed by a crazy stalker, thinking it was me, who later blocked the car from moving and climbed onto the hood. Legal action is being taken against Sweeney and organizations who supported harm to my family. And then he tweeted out the picture of the person who allegedly did this uh, climbing on the car. Anyone recognize this person or car? And Jim Hall said, whoa, is this the guy that jumped on the hood? Elon said, yeah. Elon then retweeted SpaceX's tweet, Starlink will provide high-speed internet to Muscow Petang Reservation in the Saskatchewan, Canada, starting next year. And basically every home in the Muscow Petang Saltex nation will be getting the internet thanks to Starlink. And uh, he retweeted this, Giga Texas hits 3,000 Model Y builds a week. Congratulations to the Tesla team. And just remember that 45 days ago, they hit 2,000 cars a week. So now Giga Texas is at an annual run rate of 150,000 cars a year. SpaceX tweeted out that Ship 24 completed its single engine static fire test at Starbase in Texas. And then Elon put out a poll saying, unsuspend accounts who doxed my exact location in real time. And most people said yes. Now, if anyone posted real-time locations and addresses of the New York Times reporters, FBI would be investigating. There'd be hearings on Capitol Hill, and Biden would give speeches about the end of democracy. And he tweeted out, I love Barbara Streisand, LOL. And that's because Barbara had a house on the Hollywood Hill. Oh, right, the Streisand effect. Yes, and so the more you try and keep your location hidden, the more people want to know about it. Mark Anderson said, a warm welcome to all the newest converts to the great American cause of free speech. And Elon said, Twitter right now is fire. And soon, ladies and gentlemen, the coup de grace. Great questions. Should real-time doxing be allowed on Twitter? Meanwhile, Twitter usage by real humans once again reaches all-time highs. Kaboom, the part six of the Twitter files came out. SpaceX said that Falcon 9 launched the surface water and ocean topography mission to orbit, first stage boosters returning to Earth. Second launch today, space is back. And the people have spoken. Accounts who dox my location will have their suspension lifted now. So uh, even though he came up with one thing one day, he changed his mind the next, and he was very open and transparent about it. Twitter will start incorporating mute and block signals from Blue Verified, not Legacy Blue, as downvotes. And so inspiring to see the newfound love of freedom of speech by the press. I think that was a little tongue-in-cheek. Those who want power are the ones who least deserve it. Woo! Wow. And uh, yeah, he's going to be stepping down as the CEO of Twitter. That, At least according to the poll. That's not going to stop him tweeting. No, so will we will still have our tweets <laughs> of the week. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. And remember, share your stories, your photos, your videos with us at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. I learned a lot this week from our viewers. Let's see what we learn. Our patron Drew spotted these Rivian Amazon trucks and this R1S while driving through normal Illinois. Stu spotted this at Three Rivers Casino in Florence, Oregon. Very unusual, but on spot for Oregon. Bradley spotted these Domino's Chevy Bolt delivery vehicles in Demote, Indiana. 
None in Massachusetts, but Indiana gets them. Richard shared the story with us about this unique home charger he made. My son-in-law gave me this 1943 Bennett gas pump. It came from a Sinclair gas station. It has been stored in his backyard for the past 25 years. Said I could have it if I use it for my home charger. Son-in-law had it sandblasted and primed. I painted it blue, bought the globe online, and put the Tesla decal on it. Electrician friend installed it for me. Nice. That's awesome. Good work. Uh, Charles spotted this solo in Cincinnati, Ohio. Jason found this Sondor's e-bike at a local Costco in Marysville, Washington. Matt found this Rolls-Royce Spectre EV. Yeah, he said today while charging our Hyundai Ioniq 38 kilowatt hour at a DC rapid charger at the McDonald's car park in Didcock, Oxfordshire, UK, a Rolls-Royce Spectre pulled in and charged next to us. The Spectre isn't out until late 2023. It's estimated to cost around 350,000 pounds in the UK. So this is a pre-production. Yeah, wow. and you spotted it. Thanks, Matt. Fancy. Our patron Anthony found this X-Pang store in Copenhagen and shared these photos of the P7. I don't know why I didn't know it had uh, the butterfly doors. I didn't know that either. Scissor doors, whatever they are. Shalvin sent us these pics of an EV truck they spotted in British Columbia, Canada. And it is now time for Supercharger Reviews. So people, get to work. And before we get to the Supercharger Reviews, okay. we normally talk about beautiful superchargers. Uh, but this week, I want to talk about beautiful mega chargers. These are four new mega chargers that just went in at the PepsiCo Beverages plant in Sacramento, California at 7550 Reese Road. Yeah, so it appears that there are now three mega charger locations so far in the world, two in California and one in Nevada. And I mean, it's kind of beautiful in, in a non-beautiful way. I mean, the first three in the world, pretty soon there's going to be more. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got for supercharger locations in the world. Hi, Zach and Jesse. This is uh, Daniel. I'm over here doing the review for the... Tesla Supercharger in Fort Valley, outside of the uh, Highway 75. And there is uh, 16 stalls that they're located in the Bucky's, in the Bucky's uh, gas station. It's one of the biggest gas stations that I have ever seen with a beautiful and great barbecue that uh, we invite you to come and visit. We're in our way from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, in the way down to Florida. And over here in this gas station, you can find very clean bathrooms with a beautiful uh, shopping area for food. And I will give a 10 review of this Tesla supercharger. I recommend it very much. I hope uh, that we have more of this across the states because this is an awesome location to stop and it's 24 hours open so you can come over here anytime hi zach and jesse i'm janine and i'm here in coburg ontario at the site of the new tesla v3 supercharger this site has eight stalls is located off a secondary highway so not the main route but a scenic one it's surrounded by a few shops, a local mall across the street, and there's a Tim Hortons right here, about a minute's walk from the Chargers, and a Canadian Tire right behind. Overall, I'd give this location a solid 7 out of 10. And now you know. Hi, Zach and Jesse. This is Tyrone, traveling down towards Calais with my wife and my niece. We are at the Air de la Baie du Son supercharger in France. There's 10 superchargers, 150 kilowatt hours. It's amazing facilities here. There's toilets, there's a shell uh, station that uh, does petrol as well. Uh, also, Pizza Hut and a Starbucks for coffee. Amazing views from the tower and a lovely walk, uh, which we're going to explore in a moment after we've eaten some food. We have to move at 80% because it's very busy, so that's the maximum we can charge until before idle fees kick in. And I will give this supercharger an 8 out of 10. Now you know. I'm here at the Newburgh, New York Supercharger, uh, which is an interesting location, about a mile, a uh, mile and a half off the highway. Uh, it is right in the back of this restaurant. I think it's Cosimo's or Cosimo's. Uh, great restaurant. Um, all pull-in uh, stalls uh, here on the kind of the back side of the restaurant. You have to walk around uh, over that way uh, to the entrance. Uh, however, uh, the station failed, like totally died while I was here. Uh, I got about five minutes of charging in and then the station went offline. Uh, and there's no way to reach Tesla to tell them about it. So uh, if I had 
completed my charge, I would have given this like an eight, but given that I couldn't charge and I can't reach anybody, I'm gonna give it like a one. Thank you so much for doing supercharger reviews. If you wanna see a map that has all the supercharger reviews where you can even upload your own review, you can head over to our website, nowyouknowchannel.com. And that's how you get on the show. And now it's time for the newest, newest, greatest, latest. And we got three pages of them, Jesse. So get your lips ready for this. Oh, my God. Three pages in a week. Not kidding around. Since last Tesla Time yes. News, these are the new superchargers that were installed this week. Insane. I'm going to have to have some coffee. The 16 stall in Red Oaks, Texas. The 8 stall in Offshore, Norway. The 8 stall in Shenandoah at Metro Park Drive, Texas. The 8 stall in College Station, Texas Ave South, Texas. The 8 stall in Edison, Route 1, New Jersey. The 8 stall in Downington, Pennsylvania. Number 52 in Australia is the 4 stall in Tenterfield, New South Wales. The 8 stall in Roma North, Italy. The 20 stall in Ullival, Norway. The 3 stall in Shanghai at Hang Seng Wan Li Plaza, China. The 3 stall in Shanghai at Jaiwan Dream Plaza, China. The 3 stall in Bayou Longjian International Hotel, China. The 3 stall in Shanghai at Forte Central Plaza, China. The 3 stall 150 kilowatt in Haizhou at the Golden Bay Regal Resort, China. The 6 stall in Jiangming at the Enping Yucca Hotel, China. The 40 stall in Sherman Oaks at Ventura Boulevard, California. Number 54 in Japan is the 6 stall in Yaizu, Japan. The 12 stall in Fausk, Norway. Number 102 in Norway is the 12 stall in Vegli, Norway. The 6 stall in Castlegar, British Columbia. Number 129 in France is the 12 stall in Megavi, France. The 3 stall in Xinmi, Guanyan City Plaza, China. The three stall in Yangzhou at the Wuyi Plaza in China. The three stall in Forshan at the Shundi Daxin Metropolis, China. The eight stall in Melissa, Texas. The eight stall in Valle de Carnia, Italy. Number 27 in Austria is the 16 stall in Volker Market, Austria. Number 103 in Texas is the eight stall at McKinney in University Drive, Texas. The 40 stall in Schleitz, Germany. The 8 stall in Kamloops Powell Trail, British Columbia. Number 172 in Canada is the 12 stall in Edmonton at Currents Drive Northwest in Alberta. Currents Drive, that's pretty cool. <laughs> 80 stall in Coalinga, California. The 8 stall in Valencia, California. Uh, number 19 in Belgium is the 16 stall in Liege, Belgium. The 16 stall in Lake Elsinore at Grape Street, California. Number 56 in Pennsylvania is the 12 stall in Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania. Number 34 in Arizona is the 12 stall in Mesa, Arizona. The 8 stall in North Bergen at John F. Kennedy Boulevard, New Jersey. Number 53 in New Jersey is the 12 stall in Little Ferry, New Jersey. Number 330 in California is the 24 stall in Beaumont at Oak Valley Village Circle in California. Number 153 in Germany is the 40 stall at Merklingen, Germany. Number 63 in Italy is the 12 stall in Sarzana, Italy. Number 39 in Maryland is the 12 stall at Bethesda at Elm Street, Maryland. The 6 stall in Chongqing at Paralong Plaza, China. The 3 stall in Chengdu at Xingjing Easy Home, China. Number 1516 in China is the 9 stall at Shanghai Bailan Xinhui Shopping Center, China. And number 77 in New York, 1,602 in the United States, and 4,554 in the world is the eight stall in Hancock, New York. Woo! That's wow! A lot. They built all of those in one week. How is that possible? I think some of the China ones might be slightly delayed. Maybe, but... I feel like that sometimes happens, And but... have you seen the permit list in Australia? No, it's like going to double the number if they build them out at, according to the permits. That's, That's awesome. crazy. So we didn't get to Topher's question of one of our patrons last week on our uh, Q&A with Z and J. That's where every month or so we try and do a 30 minute questions of our patrons. Mm. Um, and I thought we'd take a shot at it now because we didn't get to it. And Topher said, thank you. This is the reason I became a patron so I could ask you guys these two questions. Will Tesla have a lumber rack for the Cybertruck? And can you put a winch on it? And look, I wish we knew the answer definitively. Mm. Obviously, we don't. But I do think that this will be one, if not the best selling trucks in the world before long. So even if Tesla doesn't make a lumber rack, third party companies will for sure. And as for putting a winch on it, I think it would be silly for Tesla not to have their own winch accessories and other accessories. But again, even if Tesla doesn't do it, as long as you can bolt a winch onto some part of the frame, you'll be good to go. And this gets to the crux of it. I've got to believe that the designers and the engineers at Tesla understand what trucks are supposed to do unlike ford and i'm just saying that because we're going to come out the video talking a little bit more about that soon uh, now that winter is hit if that's a hint to you but yeah so topher i think we're going to be in good shape with tesla i can't imagine that they're going to forget such important things like you said of you know racks winches hopefully uh plowing um 
but you know, if we don't know yet, and that's what we're excited hey, to find out. Hey, end of the day, it's gonna be made out of stainless steel. They're not even gonna paint it. So all you gotta do is, you know, take a little rag, wipe it off a little bit, and gzz, there you go. Oh, welding. Yeah. Yeah. No, stainless no. steel welding. It's not hard. Uh, a little we, hard. We haven't done it yet. It's a little hard, but I mean, pe- people know how to do it. You can learn how to do it. It's true. I mean, learn we, how to weld. We know how to aluminum <laughs> and steel weld. So I'm sure stainless steel's so easy. No, well, not. when we get our cyber truck, that's be one of the things we'll do. I know. We'll what weld we, some stuff. What should to we it. be welding to our cyber truck? Put, oh, down, I, put it down in the comments. Okay, you know? I know what I want to weld. Hey, thank you to all these people who are going by here. You guys make the show possible. And if you're wondering, like, how do you get your name here on the end plate? Head on over to patreon.com slash now you know. Support us for as little as five bucks a month, and you'll be on the end plate making the show happen every week. And you're going to get access to the Patreon polls, mm-hmm. the Q&A with ZNJ, the bonus our stories. Discord, our, the bonus stories. Um, you're going to get a lot of really good content and stuff. Um, if you want more stuff, we have better. Oh, even Patreon out of context, lot. by the way. Yes. Yeah. Out of con- we, we have lots and lots of different levels um, to choose from. You can get, you know, go as high as getting your name as an executive producer on the end of the sh- end right. credits. Um, and also these mugs. That's, I think we're still, we might have sold out. No, we have some. We have some. We have some? Yeah. All right. Worst case, we will have to get more. Um, but thank you so much f- to everyone who supports this channel. Thank you to you for watching. Um, we really, really appreciate it. We can't do the show without you. Um, and and it, we can't do it without people who hit the like button. It's true. I and don't we, know why. We have a special holiday episode coming up next week. Um, we're working on it now. So hopefully you guys stay tuned for that and maybe watch it while you're watching the fire. Hint, hint. If oh. you watch to the end of the show, I just want to give you a little hint. There might be another like, special bonus video coming out for little you. Yule log, little huh? Yule Log video oh. uh, just, just for you guys. Okay. But uh, you'll have to see. All right. We will see you next time. Now you know.